Hello everybody, it's the old bear from the old bear's den in Bigfoot. I'm back again. I got another one for you out of South Carolina. This one happened a few years ago, um, probably about four or five years ago from what I understand. And um, we're talking about the gentleman that had, this is a family member of the gentleman that had the account of the female Bigfoot that evidently thought he was cute. And, well, this one kind of starts out, uh, the gentleman that, that's in question here is a cousin of this person, and he was out hunting with a few of his buddies, and they were doing man deer drives, where guys walk through a piece of woods where they know deer hang out at, and, uh, Hold on a second. Well, sorry about that. That was the wife's car making noise. We had to shut that thing up. You got to shut it down, lock it, and all this other crap. Anyway, uh, the gentleman was out with a few of his family and friends, uh, mainly friends that they were, uh, I think there was a couple other family members there, but they were like distant cousins. And... They were out doing man deer drives, and in those man deer drives is where, you know, people walk through a section of forest where they know the deer kind of hang out and lay in, and and uh, they push deer to each other, and, and there's, there's guys that stand, and when a deer comes past, they hopefully shoot the deer, and it falls over, and they take it home and, and uh, process the meat and have deer jerky or burgers, or steaks, or whatever they want. Anyway, uh, this guy in question, he uh, decided that he was going to go and do some standing uh, because he had injured himself uh, at work. And he was, I think he had got a hernia and because of this, he uh, wasn't able to really walk very much. Uh, it was hindering his walking, uh, so he elected to take a, uh, a uh, four-wheeler of his, and he rode around to the uh, head of a hollow, and evidently, uh, this is, he, he got into a major crossing, uh, that the deer use a lot. Uh, they've done these drives before and they pretty much knew where these things would take off and run to. So he was doing, he had got in place and on time and, and, uh, he had, uh, uh, they had started the deer drive and, and they were coming through this hollow. Uh, wasn't probably, 300 yards wide so there was I think there was he told me there was four drivers there were two guys that were near the hollow pushing and then two guys one guy on each side of the the two hills pushing towards the head of the hollow well there's some pretty thick brush down in there and uh he told me it was, there's a couple of places in there where it's briar thickets and everything. And deer, they go around those. Uh, they, they lay on either side of them. Well, evidently there was something else laying in there. There wasn't any deer in the hollow. They didn't scare anything out of there towards him. Uh, and the other two standers that were there. Uh, there were standers high on the uh, ridges on both sides. He could see one guy. And um, he could see the other guy, the uh, buddy of his that was on his left side could see him. And then he could see the guy that was on the right also. Uh, they they stayed that close because the head of the hollow was pretty open and they had no problem seeing each other. And that way it gave them a pretty good chance to know where everybody's at. And they were doing it safely, which is a good thing. And as they were doing it safely... 
they uh, pushed through, the guys were pushing through the hollow, and they had, eh, they didn't jump any deer, but they did jump something uh, near this one briar patch, and they don't know what it was, but it, when it went off, it sounded really big and heavy. And somebody whistled, said a deer's up, or yelled and screamed and said a deer was up. And uh, this thing came right up towards this guy that was uh, a little bit injured. Um, and, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't run real fast, but he could run a little bit. And he had positioned a four-wheeler about 40 or 50 yards in behind him and had stashed it, uh, parked it, backed up to a big oak tree uh, that was wide as the four-wheeler was. And he had walked over the hill. But like I said, he could see the other two guys, one on his left, one on his right. And they were having, um, getting a deer drive and, and, and you know, they, they, they hollered and said the deer was up and he's looking and he's, he doesn't see any deer. And then, and then he starts hearing heavy footfalls, uh, and he, and he raises his gun up and this thing just runs up to him within about 10 or 15 feet and stops. It finally saw him standing there beside a tree and... <laughs> Well, they kind of have uh, an intense stare down for a minute. And this thing runs back towards the drivers. Well, when it ran back towards the drivers, uh, it evidently had pushed a deer that was laying there. And the deer runs up towards this guy. He takes a shot at the deer. Well that Bigfoot evidently finally remembered that there's people coming up the hollow and it's trying to figure out a way. I, I guess it was just uh, flummoxed or whatever you want to call it. You know, it was just running and it turns and runs back through the hollow and it sees the deer when it falls and it starts running up towards that deer and, and the deer didn't fall, but 20 feet from this guy. And it's the strangest thing. It's like this Bigfoot had lost its mind. It wasn't remembering there was a hunter there. And there's hunters coming up the holler. And this thing is just trying to get out of Dodge. And then it sees an animal fall. And it, I guess it decides it can grab the deer and keep on running. Well, it runs up there and it sees the guy again. And it stops. And they kind of have a little bit of an intense stare down for a few minutes and he's like I said before he's 50 60 yards away from his four-wheeler and his buddies are on the hillside and they're watching all this go on and they're like what in that they don't know what's going on they don't know what this thing is they've never seen it before you know nobody has a clue what this creature is and it's, and it's getting between, it's coming up on the deer and it stops and standing there staring at it, at their buddy that's slightly injured. And I guess both of them decided at the same moment to come off the hill to help him out. And after the intense stare down for about five seconds, he turns to go to get on the four wheeler to leave and he starts kind of limping quickly or, you know, kind of semi running, jogging. And, you know, he can't move real fast. And this thing just kind of keeps pace with him right behind him, you know, at about 10 or 15 feet the whole time. And he gets up to the floor and his buddies are, you know, they're coming from one from one the right and one from the left. And, and they're hollering and screaming and everything else. And this Bigfoot finally did, uh, sees these people coming and acting complete crazy. And because, you know, this thing's chasing their buddy and it, it turns and uh, it veers off uh, to, as you're facing the head of the holler to the right. 
and it goes past him probably approximately he said 15 to 20 feet and the whole time it's just grunting and growling at him and it's just huffing and puffing and it's it's making a lot of noise and uh, it's it didn't hurt no one but he said it hurt his pride um i don't know what that meant if anybody else knows and of course my wife's phone starts going nuts why she turns that thing on it's a woman that's all i can say anyway i'm getting my hat pulled down over my eyes Mrs. Bear is not happy with me. Yes, Mrs. Bear is happy with you. Anyways, uh, at this point, this Bigfoot disappears from the scene. Uh, his two buddies come down, and, you know, they heard him shoot, and they saw this creature. And they're just like, what the heck was that? You know, what is that thing? What was it? Did it hurt you? Did it? You know, we saw you shoot the deer, and, you know, he says, guys, can y'all go down and get that deer, and I'll sit up here with my rifle. If that thing comes back, I'm going to shoot it. I'm not going to put up with that no more. I'm going to shoot it. So his two buddies go down and, and get his deer for him, and they got it for him, and they bring it up, and they put it on the four-wheeler, and and all three of them, you know, they're they're waiting on the drivers to come up there, and this thing lets out a scream from the next little holler or a little ridge over. And I mean, it sends their blood cold instantly. They all three are like, nope, not sticking around. Them guys can fend for themselves. Well, about that time, the other guys come up there and they heard the scream. And uh, it, one of them said, it sounded like some one of you guys is screaming bloody murder up here. Like y'all were dying. That's the reason we quit the drive and hurried up. And everything, with everything going on, they they got out of there with the deer. There's there's seven guys with high powered rifles and shotguns and loaded with, you know, uh, slugs or whatever they had in their guns and you know their shotguns and then high powered rifles and they they just leave. So they all get out the ridge load up go home and uh, a couple of days later the guy said that everybody got together and they were talking about what had went on while they were skinning this deer out and he let it hang for a couple of days and they were skinning the deer out and uh, he was telling telling all the guys what he saw and the two guys that saw it were like yeah man this thing is huge it made him look like he's a kid and uh they, you know, they, they talked about it for a while. And when I did a little bit of research and found out what, it, what they're called, and, and uh, he said, that thing was a Sasquatch. And the guys were like, what? A Sas what? And he said, well, it's a, you know, it's the slang term is kind of like Bigfoot. And they're like, Wow those things are here i thought they were out west or something but yeah they're everywhere in the united states guys sorry to tell you that uh but anyway that was his account we got one more for you and this one's a little bit involved and it'll probably be a little bit longer so i hope you enjoy this one this will be the third in the in the, in the series of four and uh we'll uh bring you the last one the last one's probably the most intense encounter, and I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of them. Thank you all for watching, and we appreciate you. Y'all have a blessed day. It's Old Bear and Mrs. Old Bear signing off. Bye. Good night.